Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Salvador, and this is another R video. And we're going to be talking about model fit and structural equation modeling. So, the purpose of this video is to illustrate a common problem in structural equation modeling. And that is illustrated in the conversation between the Hugh and Bentler recommendations that are really popular that come from their influential 1999 paper and some of the reactions to them, um, including from uh, this Marsh, How, and When article and this Todd Little book. So Hugh and Bentler basically uh, suggest that the guidelines that people had been using for a while, which is a RMSEA and SRM are below at, at 0 0.08 or below, and a CFI and TLI of 0.9 and above, that those guidelines uh, were letting too many misspecified models through, um, and, and so they weren't rejecting enough models. And so they recommended increasing the thresholds to 0.95 for CFI and TLI, and reducing them to 0 0.06 for RMSEA and SRMR. And that is uh, pretty common in a lot of fields that those recommendations will be the um, what reviewers and editors expect people to hold to. Um, but in this Marsh, How, and When article, they write, um, it is my experience that it is almost impossible to get an acceptable fit, e.g. CFI, TLI, less than, or uh, greater than 0.9, RMSEA, less than 0.05, uh, or even good multi-factor rating instruments when analyses are done at the item level and there are multiple factors, e.g. 5 to 10, each measured with a reasonable number of items, e.g. at least 5 to 10 per scale, so that there are at least 50 items overall. They write, we strongly encourage researchers, textbook authors, reviewers, and journal editors not to overgeneralize the Hu and Bentler results, transforming heuristic findings based on a very limited sample of misspecified models into golden rules of fit that are broadly applied without the cautions recommended by Hu and Bentler. Um, so, uh, if you're anything like me, then you have tried to fit uh, various models over time, and depending on the nature of your measures, you found that the uh, model fit recommendations in your field may be overly restrictive and you can't figure out why and you have trouble chasing the Hugh and Bentler recommendations. So I wanted to make this video to demonstrate this problem and then a couple of follow-up videos to demonstrate uh, how to diagnose the sources of the problem and how to address them. So I want to start with four variables and none of the variables have a uh, an incredibly large number of items, and we'll look at them and see how they do. So the first is a trait reactance variable that comes from psychological reactance literature, and this is measuring uh, people's general inclination to experience psychological reactance or not. And so the items in it are, one, regulations trigger a sense of resistance in me. Two, I find contradicting others stimulating. Three, when something is prohibited, I usually think, that's exactly what I'm going to do. The thought of being dependent on others aggravates me. I consider advice from others to be an intrusion. I become frustrated when I'm unable to make free and independent decisions. It irritates me when someone points out things which are obvious to me. I become angry when my freedom of choice is restricted. Advice and recommendations usually induce me to do just the opposite. I am content only when I'm acting of my own free will. I resist the attempts of others to influence me. It makes me angry when another person is held up as a role model for me to follow. When someone forces me to do something, I feel like doing the opposite. And it disappoints me to see others submitting to standards and rules. So this is a 14-item reactance, state reactance scale that's been developed and validated in the literature. It's not too big, and I didn't read any of those items and think, ooh, this, is gonna, this one's going to be a problem, or we really need to revise this. It seems all pretty straightforward to me. Then we have four freedom threat items. The message threatened my freedom to choose. The message tried to make a decision for me. The message tried to manipulate me. And the message tried to pressure me. 
I don't think there's anything unusual about that. I've used this variable a handful of times, and it seems uh, a very effective and reasonable variable. Um, and then we have anger. Did this message make you feel angry, irritated, annoyed, aggravated? So those are four items commonly used in the emotions literature to measure anger. And then we have attitude. This is a study about being a living organ donor that uh, I worked on with um, C.C. Hu and Courtney Bowman, who are fabulous scholars. They were students in the School of Journalism here, and they collected this data and uh, invited me to be part of the project. And so it was about how do you feel about being a living organ donor? And the options were bad, foolish, harmful, difficult, negative, and not needed or good, wise, beneficial, easy, positive, and needed. So those are the attitude options used in this study. So here's the model. Um, we have the trait reactance variable, which is the R, we're, we're calling it RS, and all of the items are RS 1 through 14. We have the freedom threat variable, which is FT 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we're calling it FT the anger variable with those four anger items, and the attitude variable with those six attitude items, and we're calling it AT. So if we fit that model using a robust maximum likelihood estimator and the fixed factor method, and then we get the summary of the model, the first thing that we notice is that the CFI is 0.84 and the TLI is 0.825. So that's well below, and you know, yeah, the, the robust uh, statistics aren't particularly better. So this is well below uh, basically any, any standard or recommendation that I've seen in the literature. Um, and, and I think this confirms to what, or conforms to what we saw in the quotation from the Marsh, How, and When article, where there are only four variables here. One of them has 14 items, and the others don't have that many items. And they all seem pretty reasonable, straightforward variables. Um, and yet we're nowhere close to the model fit that we're going to be expected to have. The RMSEA is 0 0.087, and the SRMR is 0 0.106. So this model fit is clearly inadequate. It clearly suggests that there are problems with our um, measurement model. Um, and you know, I think a lot of people find themselves into the, in this situation where they run a confirmatory factor analysis on scales that they know work perfectly well, that they've used before, and they see this model fit and they say, what is going on? Um, and that's what this video is about. What is going on? Um, now, if we look at the loadings for the RS variable, there are some that jump out, right? So the fourth one, the loading is 0.44. The sixth one, the loading is 0.35. The eighth one, the loading is 0.38. Um, and the tenth one, the loading is 0.45. So not all of the loadings, uh, not all of the standardized loadings are, are very good for that scale. Um, and then if we look down at the attitude scale, Attitude 4 has also a pretty low loading, so 0.295. That's a pretty low loading for that. And if we go back to the survey, I took the liberty of highlighting the items that were performing not so well so that we could ask ourselves what we think is going on. So the four items in the trait reactant scale that weren't behaving very well, the thought of being dependent on others aggravates me. I become frustrated when I'm unable to make free and independent decisions. I become angry when my freedom of choice is restricted, and I am content only when I'm acting of my own free will. Perhaps those items represent something of a sub-factor in this scale. Um, perhaps they're just not as good items as the other items. I don't see anything inherent in them that, that's clearly problematic. To me, they seem like good candidates for this scale. Um, and so I don't look at that and see, I really learned something in this CFA about this scale and we need to revise it. I look at this and see four items that, that seem fine. And then if we look at that attitude scale, I believe being an organ donor is, and the one that was not working very well was the fourth one, difficult and easy. And I think that makes sense. Difficult slash easy is maybe an 
efficacy question, do I think I could do it? The others, bad, foolish, harmful, negative, not needed, those are more normative evaluations of whether one should do it, whereas difficult, easy is maybe an, eval an efficacy evaluation of whether I could do it or whether I would be able to do it if I wanted to. So here, maybe the low loading is telling us that that item doesn't belong in this scale and it's maybe measuring something that's, that's uh, totally different. So that is the diagnostic piece. That is the, um, okay, the, um, the measurement model doesn't fit with the recommendations that we usually have. And I think that when you look at a handful of variables with a handful of items, so, you know, maybe five to eight variables with, you know, eight to 12 items each, I think this is what people are almost always going to find that the model fit doesn't line up with the expectations they're being held to. So in subsequent videos, we're going to look at what's going on there, how to diagnose where the problems are coming from, and is there a simple, elegant solution to those problems. So stay tuned for, for that. And thanks for watching.